the Hollywood Radio Theater. And now, the Hollywood Radio Theater production of Saigon. It's Act One with our stars, John Lund as Larry and Elizabeth Scott as Susan. Shanghai, 1946, a United States Army field hospital. In the office of the chief surgeon... I'm telling you this, Larry, only because you're Mike's best friend. There's nothing more we can do for him. You're certain? I've had a dozen other doctors. They all say the same thing. Have you told Mike? I wanted to talk to you first. But it's been our experience that it's best to tell the patient the truth. What is the truth? I mean, exactly. He's leaving this hospital today thinking he's completely cured. But the injury to his brain is beyond repair. He'll be dead within two or three months. Do me a favor. Let me tell him. If you'd rather. You've been pretty close to him, haven't you? Four years together in a bomber. Mike and I and Pete Rocco. Mike's picking up his separation papers. Will you tell him that Pete and I will meet him at the Jade Cafe? I'll tell him. Good luck, Larry. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Doc. Couldn't be rougher, Pete. They give him three months to live. Maybe sooner. How'd he take it? He doesn't know. I told the doctor I'd tell him. How? How you gonna tell him? We're not gonna tell him. But we ain't got the right to decide that. We ought to take him back home to Ohio. Ohio's a fine place if you got the time. Or if Mike had any folks. There's only something we could do for him. Something nice without Mike knowing it. You know what I mean? We're going to stick close to him, Pete. We're going to take those three months and we're going to pack him with a hundred years of living. Good living. No rough spots, no bumps. Okay? Sure. Okay. But what about the dough? Well, maybe I got the answer. You know that flying job I was telling you about? Yeah, wait a minute. Here he comes. A fine thing. You guys couldn't even wait till I got my separation papers. And where's my drink? Hey, bartender, give us another glass. Well, boys, I'm a civilian. But how come you told him I wanted to be separated here in Shanghai? <laughs> Makes it easier on the poor taxpayers. You've been sponging off the government for years. Time you started shifting for yourself. Look, you guys didn't wave your transportation home just to wait around for me, did you? Why should we want to wait around for you? As a matter of fact, Pete and I have lined up a little flying job. Oh? We thought you might like to tag along. It's a quickie, see? And very good pay. Enough to buy a time for ourselves. You guys wait here. We're going to tie one on. I had better see the bartender. Hey, what's going on between you two, not wanting to go home? Look, does a college boy have to be a dope? Didn't they teach you nothing about life? Don't you know why the skipper don't want to go home? No, I don't. Well, you forgot, huh? Forgot all about the mouse that gave him the brush off. Don't you remember the wedding announcement she sent him? Well, I thought Larry was all over that. Look, Mike, we gotta stick with the skipper, see? Make him forget. We'll give him the binge of his life. A hundred years of good living. No rough spots, no bumps. Oh, now you're starting to make some sense. Who wants to go home? How's this? Twelve-year-old scotch. Yeah. But uh, if you still want to go back to Ohio, Mike... We got a job here, haven't we? Now, who's this guy who's gonna put us to work? His name is Maris. I'll tell you all about it later tonight. I'm meeting him in an hour. What do you say, guys? A drink to Mr. Maris. I know Bob. Come in, Major Briggs. Sit down, please. Oh, uh, this is an associate of mine. His name is Simon. How do you do? <laughs> Simon does not talk, but he listens very well. So, you've reconsidered my offer, eh? Yes, I'd like the job, Mr. Maris. I'm really delighted, Major. Ex-Major. Now... What about money? How much? Ten thousand. Dollars? American dollars. Ten thousand dollars for one flight. What do we do, smuggle rubies? I'm employing you for a business trip. And why so much money? Oh, call it sentiment, Major. Uh, Simon and I have great admiration for heroes, being perhaps such cowards ourselves. Besides, when I enter the plane, my life will be in your hands, won't it? Well, I'm rather fond of looking forward to a ripe old age. It's a nice thing to look forward to. And for $10,000, I'll fly you to Saigon on my back. <laughs> that may yet be necessary. 
Now about the flight. Never mind the details. Just tell me where the plane is. My chauffeur will take you to the field. I want that plane to leave on Tuesday promptly at 6 p.m. I am a fanatic about promptness, Major. 6 p.m. Tuesday. That's what you're paying for. That's what you'll get. The plane will be ready to take off. You have nothing to worry about other than getting me to Saigon. I'll look the plane over tomorrow. Forgive me, but you won't. My chauffeur will call for you and your crew Tuesday afternoon at 4 o'clock. It's an hour's drive to the field. That leaves you a full hour to do your looking over. I hope that's satisfactory. It'll have to be, won't it? Don't be disturbed, Major. We're going to get along splendidly. <laughs> splendidly. Engines seem okay, Skipper. Keep them idling? Yeah. Ten after six. Our boss is really late. Well, it's an old army plane, all right. But no insignias. I'm beginning to catch on why the ten grand... Private field way out in the country. There's a car coming, Larry. Well, I guess we're all set. Get those blocks out under the wheels, Pete. Look who's getting out of the car. A mouse. She's alone. Where's Maris? Hey, maybe the whole deal's off. No, it's not off. She's carrying a bag and a briefcase. Will one of you take my bag, please? What's your hurry, sister? Hey, some chicky. I'll get her bag. What are you doing here? Nobody told me anything about a dame. Which one of you is Major Briggs? I am. I'm Mr. Maris's secretary. He'll be here any minute. Oh, you. Yes. You can put the bag in the plane, please. Now, just slow down, honey. Maris was supposed to be here at 6 o'clock. Is the plane ready? It's ready. That's all you need to be concerned about. We'll wait for him. It's getting dark. He better be here soon or we'll never get off the field. Will this make waiting any easier? You mean that's real money? All of it? It's for you. But not until we reach Saigon. That was the deal, wasn't it? A disillusion, Mouse Skipper. Somebody must have shattered her faith in men. There's a car coming, Larry. See that dust over the hill? That'll be Mr. Maris and Simon. I'll get in the plane. Hey, somebody's shooting. Mr. Maris seems to be in a little difficulty. Don't sound wholesome, Skipper. Cops, maybe. We're not waiting to find out. Get in that plane. You made an agreement. You've got to wait. We made an agreement to fly at six, and it's after six. Rev them up, Mike. Oh, wait, please. I'll, I'll make it 15,000. No, thanks. We're a little tired of bullets. Oh, please, you've got to wait. You can't leave. Get off the plane. I won't get off. Not until you do. Sit on her, Pete, yeah. and close the door. Move over, Mike. Right. Oh, please turn back. Take it easy, honey. You'll crack the stop. No, no, you can't go without Alex. I told you to sit on her, yeah. Pete. Let go of me. Turn back. I won't let you. First chicky I've socked in four years. Hang on, sucker. We're taking off. Holy smoke. That's some takeoff. We're off the ground, aren't we? How'd you ever get to be a major? How's the girl? Oh, she's okay. Well, did you have to hit her? Are you all right? Oh, sure. Just wonderful. I'm sorry. Where do we go now? Shanghai Airport? There are a few things we'd have to explain, and I don't think they'd believe us. We're going to Saigon. Saigon? Oh, now, just a minute. Our visa says Saigon. We made a deal, and we want to get paid. If you go to Saigon, Mr. Maris Look, will... secretary... As soon as we land, I'd buy a newspaper if I were you and turn to the want ad. I have an awful feeling those shots back there were police bullets. You don't really know it was the police. No, but you do. That look in your eyes, honey. Why, you was real scared. Why don't you guys cut it out? Leave her alone. Thanks. Make her comfortable, Mike. Then let's see how we're doing. You're cold, aren't you? Here. Here's a blanket. Thanks. That's better, eh? Well, we ought to be in Saigon in a couple of hours. I'm sorry there's nothing to eat. If we hadn't left in such a hurry, there I would... There are a lot of people who never miss a meal. Does their souls good to find out what it means. I've missed meals, mister. It didn't do me any good. Maybe you've got some sandwiches in that briefcase of yours. Yeah. I think I'll take a look. Leave it alone. I said, leave it alone. Lay off, will you, Pete? Ah, what she's so worried about the briefcase for? Give it, it to me. Give it to it, me or I'll... Uh, hey, Mike. Mike, what's the matter? I, I didn't mean to push him. I'll shut just... up. Come on, Mike. Come on, kid. Hey, Larry, Larry, he hit his head. Take over. Yeah. Say, what is this, a game? He couldn't have hurt himself. Just stand back. Mike. Mike. Mike, come on. Huh? Snap out of it, kid. What gives? You feel all right? 
Yeah. I... I tripped, I guess. Bump my nice new head. Better watch your footwork. Now sit down. Take it easy. I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. It wasn't your fault. Say, tell me something. What's a nice boy like you doing with these two? Go on, nice boy. Tell us. Huh? Well, we've always been together. That is, all through the war. There were more of us once, only their luck ran out. What's your name? Susan Cleaver. Susan, huh? Ah, what do you know? Boy meets girl. Pete doesn't like sentiment, you see. He's never met the right girl. What do you mean, the right girl? The right girl's any girl his boyfriend ain't bigger than me. And if you don't believe me... Skipper, what goes? The left engine. Cocking out. Feather the prop before it freezes. Right. Give me a little rudder trim. That's better. Oh, that was the right engine. Switch the gas tanks. It must be the fuel line. What's the altitude? 6,000. I can't switch, Larry. The line's plugged. What happens now? You start praying. Get that door open, Pete. Drop everything that's not tied down. No cloud skipper, full of holes. Wheels down? Now leave them up. We're liable to nose over. It's all farm country down below. Not much choice but a belly landing. Oh, I feel sick. The skipper can do it blind. Do you mind if he does it with his eyes open? Brace your feet and hold tight. We're coming in. Well, in case anybody's interested, we made it. Boy, what a landing. Major Briggs, will you marry me? Where are we? The rice field. How lucky can we get? Well, let's get out. In that mud? Mud, she calls it. Wake up, sister. You're alive. Look, if it's a rice field, there must be natives. Grab our maps, Mike. I'll take our briefcase. Oh, no, you won't. You know, Miss Cleaver, maybe this job was worth $10,000 after all. Hey, here comes our ground crew. <laughs> that leaves me with only one problem. How do you say hamburger with onions in Indochina? Domong! Domong! Rudegar! Gongzi! Well, what do you know? An educated mouse. Oh, come in, Miss Cleaver. I've been wondering about you. Yeah, and where's Mike? The natives are showing him around the village. I've thanked them for their food and shelter. I told you to ask about getting out of here. We're about two days from Saigon. One day by ox cart into town and then a riverboat. Is that all? No. I'd like my 10000 You forget. You didn't wait for Mr. Marish. The money's still in your handbag, isn't it? Give me that. Ah, please, Miss Cleaver. No more wrestling. I hope it's all here. After I've counted it, I'll give you a receipt. Thank you. I'll tell the natives we're ready to leave. You know, I got a hunch that girl isn't the greatest thing that's ever happened to us. I don't think Mike's got the same hunch, Skipper. Yeah. With a girl like that, he's bound to get hurt. He hasn't got time for such things. How you gonna stop it? I don't know, but I will. Let's go. Hey, this is some town, huh? You think they got a bar? Come on, let's find a bar, huh? Do what you want to do. I'm going to buy some clothes. We'll meet you here in an hour. I may not be through in an hour. Okay. Nice knowing you, Miss Cleaver. Hey, now, wait a minute. What's wrong with all of us meeting at the hotel? I don't even know if there is a hotel. Well, sure there is. The natives told Susan. Just grab a rickshaw and meet us there. You going with her? I'd like to, if she'll let me. I was hoping you'd want to, Mike. Okay. I'll see what I can find out about the riverboat. Get me a nice room, boys. Uh, about that hotel, Miss... Uh... If I can be of any assistance. Oh, no, thanks. We're doing fine. I, uh, I am Lieutenant Keon of the regional police. Strangers are so rare here, monsieur. We like to make them welcome. About the hotel, there's just one, the Imperial. Not very elegant, I'm afraid. Good day, monsieur. A cop? Huh? What am I worried about? Have I got something to worry about? Depends on what's in her briefcase. We brought it into the country, remember? But we don't know what's in it. I once knew a guy who pleaded ignorance. He's still in jail. Hotel Imperial. Well, let's see if they got such a thing as a room clerk. Wait a minute. 
There's Mike. All set, Skipper. Three rooms and a bath. The end of the hall. You here alone? Alone? No, Susan's in her room. Oh. No questions about luggage? Yeah, no trouble at all. Seems some fella had stopped by from the regional police. Told the clerk to give us anything we wanted. Nice guy. <laughs> That's what I thought. Oh, uh, these are for us. Mm-hmm. Police cards. We got to answer a lot of questions. Hmm. Kind of personal questions, aren't they? Routine. Everybody's got to fill them out. You know, I'd like to get a gander at the mouse's card. Cut out the mouse stuff. Her name's Susan. Is that so hard to remember? Oh, sorry, sir. Sorry. You got our keys? Yeah. 15 and 16. I'm in 14. Susan's in 22. I'll wait for you in the bar. Deeper and deeper. Yeah, damn, we don't know. Bullets, cops. Look, if Mike changes his mind, if he starts looking for me, tell him I'm taking a nap. Well, where are you going? The time has come for the mouse and me to talk of many things. Mm-hmm. Room 22. And you ain't kidding. Oh, don't bother to knock, Major Briggs. It's just barge right in. Now what do you want? A few words. The only ones I can think of are words I seldom use. Hey, what's this? Oh, yeah. You filled in your police card. Put that down. Relax, will you? Susan Angela Cleaver. Oh, that's a pretty name. Real? Place of birth, Lincoln, Nebraska. Currency in possession, $78. I want that card. Now, please give it to me. Sure, here. You hold the card while I look in your briefcase, and don't try to stop me, honey. Well, what a surprise. Full of money, isn't it? Is it? $78, huh? Where did you learn to add? I didn't know what was in it. I was only told it was important. Oh, sure, sure. I don't know what business you're in, Susie, but apparently you do very well at it. All except for little mistakes like trying to drag us into it. Oh, now, wait a minute. A minute's too long. I'm saying goodbye for the three of us. You're leaving right now. Who do you think you are? One of three guys who are happier out of prison. Do you think I'd leave here now alone just because you tell me to? I could arrange for an escort. How about Lieutenant Keon? Where would I go at this hour? The riverboat, remember? It leaves in the morning, but you're getting on tonight. You scare easy, don't you, Major Briggs? Yeah, You've got your 10,000. You're rid of me. Now what? I'll look you up and tell you someday. In Lincoln, Nebraska. In just a moment, our stars will continue with Act Two of Saigon. Stress can show up as anger directed at the people closest to you. If you see what's happening, you can avoid adding to the stress and the anger. Daddy's home. Wonder what he's mad about. You're late again. What's the matter with you? What do you think? You're talking like you're mad or something. Oh, what? Yeah, I am in a bad mood. I wish I lived in a place where the money had George Washington's picture on it. Where everybody spoke English, where I could just... Well, you could just pick up the phone and call your mother. Yeah. (laughs) I think you caught me being homesick. What about you? Uh, You caught me being uptight. Inspection coming up. (laughs) Hey, where's the dog? I'd like to growl at him, too. (laughs) Daddy, you're silly. You don't even have a dog. Oh, I'm just kidding, honey. (laughs) But you're right about our being silly. (laughs) (laughs) When stress builds up, if you can see it for what it is and change your attitude even a little, you can interrupt a dangerous cycle. And now, Act Two of Saigon, starring John Lund as Larry and Elizabeth Scott as Susan. Larry and Pete are determined to keep Mike away from Susan Cleaver. And under Larry's threat to call the police, Susan has vanished from the hotel and gone aboard the riverboat. For two hours, Mike has been searching for her frantically. And now, in a native tea house... I just don't understand it, Larry. Why should she suddenly check out of the hotel and not say anything? Something's happened to her. Nothing's happened to her. 
Just that she didn't want to stick with us. That's right, kid. I push ourselves where we ain't welcome. I... I kind of thought she liked me. And why would she run out? I know it sounds crazy, but I... Well, I guess I've fallen for her, but good. And save the wisecracks, both of you. Okay. Where do we look now? Maybe she went back to the hotel while we've been gone, huh? Then let's go and find out. Good evening, monsieur. Oh. Good evening, Lieutenant. If you're not leaving, surely you'll let me buy you a cup of tea? Sorry, Keon. I'm afraid we're in a hurry. Please forgive me if I insist. You see, I have been studying your police car. Now, listen, we've told Sit you... Sit down, Mike. Thank you. Uh, you... You are Lawrence Briggs? Well? You brought a large sum of money into the country. It's on the card. $10,000. Three frugal young men who saved their money. They admirable. But on the other hand, there are men, evil men, who found the war highly profitable. In return for dollars, for franc, pound, piastre, they traded human lives. Some of these men consider my country a safe place of refuge. They are greatly mistaken. Have you anything against us? Why, no, no, my dear friend. Well, in that case, I'm sorry we can't stay for tea. Would I be rude to ask where you are going? Back to the hotel. We haven't eaten yet. Would you uh, care to join us? Unfortunately, I am hard at work. Oh, that's a pity, Lieutenant. Good night. Well, one thing about this dump, they sure know how to cook. <laughs> Come on, Mike, have some Arvino, huh? Lay off, Pete. Mike, look. You met a girl. You've known her for one day. She took a powder. I knew one for three years. You get over these things. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Quit lying to me. And you could be wrong about Susan, you know. He could be right. Okay, he could be right. Hey, where are you going? I'm going to the room. I'm tired. Didn't do so good, did we? We were going to show him a good time. We're doing fine. You got any idea? Yeah. I'm going to find her. Are you nuts? I wouldn't be surprised. Stay with Mike, Pete. I may be a while. <laughs> I come in. Now, look, Major Briggs. You wanted your money and you got it. You asked me to leave the hotel and I left. It's not that I like this luxury liner. It smells and it's hot and it's dirty. But I intend to stay on board, so leave me alone. I came to apologize. But I don't apologize easy and you're not helping. You want something. Well, what is it? A truce. You know, we've gotten used to you. We miss you. You miss me. Oh, you and that big mouth sergeant. And Mike Perry. Oh, I see. Mike Perry. He's very fond of you. Odd, isn't it? Now get out of here. Oh, I'm not finished. I have a card here, a police card. Yours. It says, currency in possession, $78. Now, we wouldn't want the police to know how poor you are at arithmetic, would Look, we? you gave me that routine before. That's why I'm on the boat, not at the hotel. I told you Mike values your company. I want him to have it. He's put you on a pedestal. Can't you see that? Well, I want you to stay there. You do? So we're coming aboard in the morning. We'll be with you on this riverboat to Saigon. You the captain? Hey, yes, sir. How long before we shove off? Uh, right away, monsieur. Mau! Mau! Bugago! Uh, were there not three of you, monsieur? That's right. Mr. Perry's gone to his cabin. He's got a headache. Oh, he will feel better on the river. I will feel better also. This flea-bitten tub, like an oven. Mo pa ye! Hey, uh, what are we holding out on Mike for? Why don't we tell him she's a boy? We don't know that she is. Let's see if she stood us up. At least you knocked last night. Well... Just dropping by. Thought we'd say hello. Hey, that's some outfit. Gee, that's what I call a peach in my Rooney. Would you rather I'd worn a nurse's uniform? No, I wouldn't change a stitch. Look, it's not going to be so tough. Mike's a nice kid. When do I go to work? Give us five minutes. Mike doesn't know you're here. Won't be hard to find us, Miss Cleaver. We're the only passengers. Pete, look! Look 
who's here? It's her, Susie. Well, what do you know? Little Susie Cleaver. Hey, you gave us quite a scare. We've been looking for you hey, all look, over the whole... Look, fellas, I... I, uh, well, you, you know how it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're leaving. You don't know how happy you've made us, Miss Cleaver. We'll see you later. Why did you run out on us, Susie? Don't you really know? Did I do something, say something? Oh, no. Then why? Well, remember what Major Briggs said about police bullets? Yeah. Well, I know a great deal about Mr. Maris's business. I, I was never aware of anything wrong, but... Well, nobody can be sure, and it... Well, it wasn't fair to involve the three of you. In a way, I'm glad you disappeared. Oh? It made me realize how... How much I missed having you around. I, I know we just met, but that's the way I feel. Oh, look, Mike. You've been cooped up in a hospital for a long time. You told me that on the plane. Well, you, you haven't seen many girls, and, and just because I happen to come along... What's the matter? Oh, what good fortune. Oh. I resigned myself to a lonely trip, and now I find friends. Good morning. Oh, Miss Cleaver, I've been thinking about you. I don't believe you left your police card at the hotel. But she didn't stay. But she did register. Yes, I, I registered. And checked out so quickly. And your card? How shall I explain this to my superior? Let's just say it was my carelessness. Mr. Biggs. Hello, Keon. Miss Cleaver left her police card with me. Here. Oh, that's right. I, I did. I'm sorry if I... All right. Quite all right. I see you answered all the questions. Well, you're not staying very long in Saigon, are you? Why do you say that? Oh, Saigon is the Paris of the Orient. I don't believe a lady of your obvious good taste could remain there for long on $78. My employer will have money waiting for me. Your employer? Mr. Maris. I'm his secretary. Oh, yes. Mr. Alex Maris. I have never met him, but even in Saigon we have heard of him. His many enterprises. Is there anything else we can help you with, Lieutenant? Now, please. Can't we forget I am a policeman? Do let us sit down and enjoy the river. Take off your hats, boys. The engine's dying. Hey, what sort of a boat is this? Don't they have an engineer? An engineer? Oh, on this boat, monsieur, Captain Renault is everything. And there is one thing he knows nothing about, the engine. About whiskey, yes. About Paris, yes. Even about surgery. He was once a great doctor. Well, suppose I go down and take a look. If anybody can fix an engine, Mike's the boy. He's an expert. Come on, Pete, I'll need help. You too, yes. Skipper. Uh, don't worry about Miss Cleaver. I'll do my best to keep her entertained. If you don't mind, I'd like to go long and walk. Hey, that's swell, Susan. Well, let's all go. An expert at anything is worth watching. Pete, wait a minute. Yeah? Keep Keon down there as long as you can. Why well, ain't you going with us? There's a little something I've got to attend to in Susie's cabin. Hey, you. You at the wheel. Oui, monsieur. Where's the captain? He is still below, monsieur. They are working on the mechanism. You carry mail on this boat, don't you? Mail? Letters. Post. Oh, we, oui, monsieur. We hold contact. Much mail. Very fine mail boat. Yeah, yeah. I believe you. Now, look, this package. See that it's mailed. And here, for your trouble. Oh, merci, 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 merci. No merci, talk, merci. see? Not to anyone. Just mail it. Larry! Get down here, quick! What is it? It's Mike. He's blacked out again. <laughs> What's wrong with him, Captain? Well, can't you tell? Keon said you were a doctor. Oh, that was a long time ago, monsieur. Anyway, your friend is better. The girl is in there with him. You don't know what made him faint? Oh, it gets very hot here below deck, and from what I have observed, your friend must have recently experienced a very complicated surgery. The scars on his skull. I think uh, maybe he will be all right in a little while. Keon's with him, too, huh? Lieutenant Keon? Oh, no, monsieur. Lieutenant Keon is on the deck. <laughs> Is something wrong, monsieur? Hello, Lieutenant. Well, I hope you're finding what you're looking for. Uh, this is your cabin, isn't it? I suppose if I told you I came in here by mistake, you wouldn't believe me. No, I wouldn't. You would be very sensible. I, I was just looking at these citations and medals from the war. Help yourself. 
Believe me, had I known of their existence, I would not be guilty of this impertinence. You know, Major, I cannot believe that a man who apparently fought with such distinction could now possibly ally himself with lawlessness, indecency, and greed. And you'd be right. Now, if you don't mind, let's try to enjoy the balance of the trip, huh? Oh, about Miss Creeper. She's Captain Perry's fiance. Oh, I see. When we are in Saigon, I must do something to entertain them. We'll be looking forward to it, Lieutenant. <laughs> You got the squeeze box, Pete. Uh, the captain. What's the matter? Ain't it romantic enough? I told you to stay with Mike. Where is he? He's okay. He's getting dialed up for the mouth. Hey, Skipper. You don't think it might happen to Mike sooner than the doc said back in Shanghai? I don't know. It was hot down there. The heat might have done it. Hey, here she comes. Hey, cut it out, will you? She's in no mood to be kidded. Oh, why not? Never mind. Just play something loud. I think the mouse is about to squeak. Well, you said you wanted to see me alone? You thief. Come again. You dirty sneak thief. You know, Miss Cleaver, if you've been robbed, the best thing to do is call a policeman. Look, that money isn't yours or mine, and I want it back. You were smart to take it out of the briefcase, but it's pretty hard to hide half a million dollars in a two-by-four stateroom. It's a very good thing I grabbed it before Keon did. Keon? Yeah. He searched my cabin for it. He was on his way down to yours. Why should I believe you? Now, look. I've been nice to Mike. That's what you wanted. I didn't double-cross you. Why are you double-crossing me? You're not paying attention, are you? Now, if you'll be a nice girl and do what you're told, you'll get your money back. You arrogant, black, mailing... You can insult me later. The captain's coming. Monsieur, mademoiselle, I am having dinner served on the deck. Uh, surely you will join me? Why, thanks. We'd be glad to. And uh, Captain Perry, of course. He feels better. We're just waiting for him now. Uh, forgive me if I make a suggestion. Uh, take that young man home, monsieur, as soon as you can. Why? Uh, every man prefers to die at home. Surely you knew that he... Yes, I knew. But he doesn't. Ah, la guerre. La salle guerre. What did he mean? Just what he said. And if you say one word about it to Mike, you'll never see a penny of that money. Oh, shut up. Won't you please shut up? The military postal service moves mail seven days a week to over 70 countries worldwide. U.S. commercial aircraft and ships transport most military mail from the U.S. Publications and parcels which qualify travel by air when space is available through the SAM and PAL programs. Even the most isolated places receive mail, often by a combination of air, sea, and land transportation. The Military Postal Service, bringing the whole world closer to you. I know I have the right to say how I feel, and I feel right. We all have our duty, it's part of the deal. And that's all right When you're proud And I don't mind saying I'm proud About the way I'm playing this game called life I'm doing what I feel is right And I'm proud, yes I'm proud We're over here and home's over there But that's okay Cause home or away My duty is here for the youth when you're proud And I don't mind saying I'm proud About the way I'm playing this game called life I'm doing what I feel is right And I'm proud Yes, I'm proud I'm proud Following the play, our star, Elizabeth Scott, will join us for a curtain call. Now it's Act Three of Saigon, starring John Lund as Larry and Elizabeth Scott as Susan. A few hours ago, the riverboat tied up at a wharf in the bustling modern city of Saigon. Lieutenant Keon of the regional police has gone to his headquarters, while his companions on the river are registered in a luxurious hotel 
preparing for an evening celebration. In her room, Susan has a visitor. I'll be right with you, Mike. Come on in. It isn't Mike. Oh, well, come in anyway. Oh, thanks. I want to tell you that I'm very grateful. You mean my conduct with Mike? Then everything's exactly as you wanted it. Exactly. Is that why I found this gift in my room? It's a very lovely dress. I'm glad you like it. Why did you send it? Why not? Look, you did something kind. Why be ashamed of it? I'm not. You're nice to Mike, and I appreciate it. How... How long are you going to stay in Saigon? If you mean, when are you going to get the money, it's possible you'll get it tomorrow. What if I wasn't thinking about that? What hey, if I... Skipper, we're ready to go. Come here. Look what I found. Mamma mia. Susie. I... I never saw anything so beautiful. <laughs> It's just the dress, Mike. Well, have fun, kids. Hey, what do you mean? Aren't you coming along? Pete and I have other plans. I've been all afternoon finding us a couple of tomatoes. We're meeting them on a terrace. Uh, maybe we'll see you there. Come on, Skipper. Thank you. Oh, there's no doubt about it, Susie. You're dancing with the luckiest guy in the world. Lucky, Mike? You? Good friends, a pocket full of dough, my health, and... Wonderful company. Oh, hey, look, there they are, the skipper and Pete. And friends. Let's buzz their table, eh? Hey, not bad. Say anything you want to, Mike. These mice don't understand English. Do you, sweetie? <laughs> Very nice, I approve. Uh, they was lonely. Saigon debutants. I was watching you, Mike. You and Susie cut a very nice rug. She's a wonderful dancer, Skipper. Are you going to take his word for it? Okay, Mike. Sure. Go ahead, just bring her back. I didn't want to force this dance on you, but I have to talk to you. What's the matter? It's Mike. Oh, it isn't fair to him. What I'm doing. Why not? Come on. Let's go where it isn't so crowded. It isn't fair to Mike. What about it? He deserves someone as nice as he is. He prefers you. That's because he doesn't know what I'm like. What are you like? I'll tell you exactly what I'm like. Doesn't that kiss tell you, Larry? You see, I'm not like Mike. I'm like you. We've both been kicked around. That kiss. I could do better than that if I really wanted to. And I do. Uh, hey, Skipper, I think maybe we ought to... Oh, so that's how it is. It's all right, Pete. I'm leaving. Well, Skip? Relax. Get the girls and let's get out of here. It's... It's getting late, Mike. Hadn't we better call it a night? What's the matter, Susie? Well, nothing, really. I... Look at me. I've got a lot to tell you, Susie. I don't know where to start. Oh, don't say it, Mike. Not yet. Things have happened so fast, and I... I'd like to think about it alone. Sure. But while you're thinking about things, remember something. That I promised to love you like nobody else could love you. Will you remember that? Yes, Mike. Come on. I'll take you to your room. Let me go alone, Mike, please. It's no hour to be knocking on your door, is it? Where's Mike? Still on the terrace. I just left him. Well? He wants me to marry him. Well, lots of people think very highly of marriage. What's wrong? Oh, nothing at all. Very few girls are as lucky as I am. Let me be the first to congratulate you. They dream of having my luck. And all that most of them can manage is just the common variety of love that you can find anywhere. But Mike thinks I'm the best thing that ever was. So 
Even if it's only for a little while, I'm... I'm going to grab him. Well... Will you be best man, Major Briggs? Or do you prefer to give the bride away? Unless you want Mike to see how happy you are, you'd better go to your room. I'll talk to you later. Oh, what are you going to tell him, Larry? To look up a minister the first thing in the morning. That's what he wants. Let him have it. been waiting for you, Susan. Oh, Alex. I didn't mean to startle you. I could have waited until morning, but I knew you'd be anxious about me. But, but that shooting when we were at the plane... You thought I was dead. Yes. And you left without me. I did not like that. However, the briefcase is safe. It is, isn't it? The money's gone, Alex. I don't have it. No, but Major Briggs has. You wonder how I know? Well, there's an excellent view of the terrace from your balcony here. From early evening, I've been enjoying it. I'll get your money, Alex. My way. Susie, may I come in? Come in, Major. Maris. We were just talking about you. My favorite subject. Quite obviously, you did not expect to find me here. I came for my money, Major Briggs. It's in a safe place. But as to getting it, now that's something we'll have to talk about. <laughs> I'm not really worried. I'll get it. And Susie knows how, don't you, Susie? Now, if you don't mind, I'll go back to my room. Just a moment. There's one thing I'm not likely to forgive, Major. Your treatment of my secretary. Oh? To regain my property, she's been compelled to be charming to three thieves. Anybody I know? Now, get away from that door, Maris. Or... Thank you, Simon. Anyone else hiding behind doors? You know I never go anywhere without Simon. You can get your money without this sort of mess. How? Mike Perry. He's dying. He doesn't know about it. Captain I... Perry? It's a great pity. He's in love with me, and if I... Well, if I play along for a while, Major Briggs will return the money. Mike doesn't have much time, a, a couple of months. All this for a friend, Major? <laughs> Beautiful. But I won't wait two months, or even two days. You'll wait. Be sensible, Major. That's a gun in Simon's hand. And the situation can be clarified very simply. I'm sure that Captain Perry wouldn't want his attentions forced on Miss Cleaver. So were he to know that he's dying? Yes. We'll go to his room now and tell him. You'll tell him nothing. The money's in a package at the post office. Post office? I mailed it from the riverboat. It's addressed to me, care of general delivery. I'll have to call for it in person. Well, in that case, we will adjourn to your room, Major. We'll keep company with you until the post office opens. Come along, Susan, dear. But if we're leaving in the morning, Alex, I, I'd better get some rest. If you'd rather. I can sleep easier now that I don't have to look forward to weeks of holding the infant's little hot hands. Good night, Alex, dear. Good night, Major. Sorry you can't join us in a glass of rat poison. <laughs> you have an unfortunate way of irritating people, Major. Everyone seems to want to strike you. Even Susan. here on the balcony, Major. We can go back in the room if you prefer. No? Very well, Simon. We'll stay on the balcony. Four hours more. Tell me something, Mr. Maris. How much do you pay Simon here? Why? I know where he can get a better job. <laughs> Why don't you tell Simon? Thank you. I will. Simon, this job pays very well. A half a million dollars for one night's work. Five hundred thousand bucks. It's too bad Simon doesn't talk. I'm sure he'd like to say something. He doesn't have to say a word. All he has to do is stop pointing that gun at me and start pointing it at you. <laughs> well, Simon. Hey, hey, Skipper. Skipper, open up. I, I took the mice home and I want a report. Tell him to go to bed. If the police are brought into this, I don't see how I could deny that you and your friends are associated with me. Not a pleasant prospect for Captain Perry, dying in jail. Skipper. Better get to bed, Pete. I'll see you in the morning. Well, what's up? Who's in there with you? Skipper. Very well, if he is so persistent. Let him in, Simon. Won't you come in, Sergeant? How can I refuse? We're here on the balcony. Our dirty linen showed up. All the way from Shanghai. 
This is Mr. Maris. The silent partner with the artillery is Simon. Oh, Mr. Maris, huh? Glad to meet you. And simple Simon. <laughs> Take care of Maris, you brick. Keep the balcony. Look out. Keep. <laughs> Hotel manager, Major Briggs. The police are returning. You are Mr. Chanuck? Yes. Lieutenant Keong has asked that you continue to wait here in my office. What about Pete Rocco? How is he? I told you he was taken to the hospital. That's all I know. Oh, to think that such a thing would happen in this... Let me remind you once again, Major. My name for the time being is Chanuck. And in case you're in the mood for exchanging confidences with Lieutenant Keong, remember that your friend's stupidity has served only to implicate you further. Don't worry, Maris. The police won't get you. Forgive me for being so long. There were several details I want to check on. What about Pete? Did you call the hospital? No, no, not yet. No. Just to refresh my memory, gentlemen, the first you knew of this quarrel between Sergeant Orko and the deceased was when you heard the thud as they fell to the terrace. We both heard it. We were together at the time. Yes, of course, yes. Um, what was the name again, sir? Simon. Edward Simon. I mean your name, sir. Chanuck. Spelled with one N. Thank you, Mr. Chanuck. Would you mind calling the hospital again, please? I asked them to ring us here if there was any change in Sergeant Rocco's condition. You know the sergeant intimately, Major. What motive could there be for such a quarrel? I don't know. We've been trying to figure it out ourselves, Lieutenant. Yeah, thank you both. I'm sorry I detained you, Mr... Uh... Chanak. Oh, yes, with one N. Uh, you may go now. I suggest you remain in your room. Of course. Good night, Lieutenant. Now, what about Captain Perry? He's asleep. He doesn't know anything about this. He knows all about it, Major. One of my men is up there with him now. Mike had nothing to do with this. He never met Chanuck and he never met Simon. So I understand. Just a routine questioning, Major. He won't be held. Yes? Yes, this is Keon. Yes, Doctor, I see. Thank you. Sergeant Rocco is dead. I'm truly sorry. Dead. Can I go there? To the hospital? Yes, yes, I suppose so. Major, remember we spoke of Miss Cleveland's employer, Mr. Maris? Vaguely. Why? The Shanghai police are looking for him. Also for half a million dollars that did not come from Mr. Maris's exporting business. Tell me about it some other time. We might never have heard of his collaboration with the enemy if, in his anxiety to leave Shanghai, he had not killed a policeman. Well, you may go now. I'll get Mike. He'll want to come with me to the hospital. Hmm. It won't be easy telling him about Sergeant Rocco. I'd better go with you. Suit yourself. The three of you, you had adjoining rooms? Yeah, at the end of the corridor. And Miss Cleaver's room? Just ahead of us. Mr. Chanock's room is right opposite? Is it? I didn't know. Wait a moment. I wonder if Mr. Chanock obeyed orders. I told him to stay in his room. Ah, yes. I can hear voices. A familiar voice, Major? Susan. She's in there. And she has not failed me. What are you talking about? Never mind. Just listen. I've been waiting for you, Alex. Go to your room. The police are here. But I have your money, Alex. Here in this package. They've searched this room. Don't you know? Come in, Lieutenant. Susan. The postmaster was most courteous, Lieutenant. He opened the post office personally. Well, take your money, Alex. You lied, killed, and stole to get it. And now it's yours. It would seem that we both misjudged her, Mr. Maris. Yes. I did kill to get this money. And I won't hesitate to kill again to keep it. Now get out on the balcony. All of you. Don't be a fool, Mars. Give me your gun. The hotel is surrounded. You cannot get away. Perhaps not, but it won't be you who stops me. I'm going straight out that door and... Mike, no. Stay where you are. Be careful, Mike. He's got a gun. Uh, that's too bad, Major. The trick won't work. I'm not foolish enough to turn my back to you. Now out on the balcony, all of you. Mike! Let him go, Major. He won't get far. Major, come back. Captain Perry. Susan. I'm here, Mike. Susan. Susan.
she was mine. I, I love Mike. Oh, no. No. <laughs> So if it's all right with you, Lieutenant, I want to leave Saigon. Now, this afternoon. You won't be detained. Thank you for getting Maris alive. He wouldn't be alive if your men hadn't... He's alive. Mike and Pete are dead. That's justice, isn't it? Yes, it is. At times, it can be very costly. Stop it. The trouble with us, Major, is that we love too many things. It complicates us. Once I was little more than a beggar. I loved no one, and so I hurt no one. I was loved by no one, so I was hurt by no one. I lived only for myself, so I needed no one but myself. I was the disciple of nothingness, emotional perfection, the one happy man. There's nothing else, Lieutenant. I'll say goodbye. I'm trying to help you. I'm not getting very far, am I? Let me only say this. You and your friends had plans, didn't you? I, too, had a plan to get mass. I was going to let all of you work things out for me, all very nice and tied up in a pretty package. It seems I never learned that in every mortal plan there is always the invisible hand. Not in his plans, Lieutenant. I'm a skeever. He knows just what he's going to do and nothing can stop him. But here's one time it didn't work out that way, did it? Well... What do I do now? Why ask me? Why not? You're the man with all the answers. Yeah, sure. How does it feel to run out of answers? Just like us ordinary humans? Susie, please, please. Oh, Larry, don't. Don't blame yourself. This happened because it, it had to happen. Maybe, maybe if we try to find the answer, Maybe if we try together. Together? Yeah. Maybe we can if we try together. And now here is Frank Brzee and our star. Elizabeth Scott, thank you for a fine performance in our radio adaptation of the Paramount Picture Saigon. Thank you, Frank. It's so nice to be here. During your film career, you spent many happy days on the Paramount lot, didn't you? Oh, they were ecstatic days, wonderful days. How long were you on Paramount's lot? Let's see. Fifteen years. It was a lot of fun. What, what was it like making a movie in those days? Oh, it's much more complex than most people, you know, realize. Uh -huh. I had to get up at five o'clock in the morning, which I adored, really. And I'd get into makeup have my breakfast, get on the set, start shooting at 9 o'clock until maybe 6 or 7 o'clock at night, then have fittings for wardrobe and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It went on and on, but it was, it was great happiness. Well, and you lived close to the studio, didn't you? Not too far away. Uh -huh. I'd say about a half hour. Well, I understand that your home in the Hollywood Hills is filled with antiques. What kind of items do you collect? I love antiques, yeah. and I've got... All sorts of antiques. I've got antiques in silver, and I've got antiques in crystal, crystal animals. And I've got... Right now, I'm sort of involved with little tiny china shoes. They're, they're really... I don't mean Chinese shoes. I mean made of china. Made of china. Right. And they are exquisite to collect. And whenever I go traveling, I always find myself a little shoe in Brazil, Uruguay, uh... Europe, uh, whatever. That sounds <laughs> exciting. Elizabeth Scott, it's been a pleasure having you on our show. Thank you, Frank. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me for another production of the Radio Theater. This is Frank Brzee saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs>